Hello, I'm Calm. Welcome to the second video in the basics video series. This second video will make more sense if you've watched the first video. In the first video, I covered all the keyboard keys and how they operate. And yes, it is quite long, but worth watching. So I suggest you watch that first and then come back to this video if you missed it. If you have watched it, I hope you liked and enjoyed it. Although I have been using computers for decades, I learned a few things while making it. In this second video, I'm going to talk about mice. As mentioned in the first video, initially computers relied more on text-based systems to operate. As things progressed onto GEMs or graphic environmental management, instead of having to type commands to run programs and instructions, they are now mainly controlled by selecting on-screen icons and menu bars. The keyboard is still used and can effectively navigate the screen and operate these menus but with the use of a mouse, it makes the tasks quicker to navigate and more effective. I'm not going to go into too much detail about operating systems such as Windows, Linux, Apple operating system, and whatever system your smartphone or tablet is using. I want to concentrate on the basic functions of a mouse, and for this I'm going to use the Windows desktop and Windows applications. Here we have a photo of a basic computer mouse. It's nicknamed a mouse due to the shape and with the connecting wire at the back, this supports a guise for a tail. You can kind of see a strange resemblance. All mice will have at least two buttons to the rear of the mouse. The left button will just refer to as the left click as it makes this clicking sound when you press the buttons. The right button will be referred to as the right click. Here we have the Windows desktop screen, so instead of having a flashing cursor, we have instead a pointer. As we move the mouse, the pointer on screen imitates these movements. If we left click, nothing happens, unless we are on top of an object. We can select this folder if we left click on it. The colour changes to signify the selection or attempt to select. If we left click and hold the button down, we can then move this item around and when we release the button, the object will be placed at the point of release. If we right click on the folder, a menu appears, displaying the possibilities of what we can do with this object. We can then move the mouse up and down within this menu until we select what option we want to use. Can you see how the line has darkened to show which option we can currently select? Further menus can be opened if the greater than symbol is displayed at the end of the line. We can select any of these options by left clicking on them. In my instance, I am going to select copy. The menu disappears in this instance, but we can then right click to bring back the menu. I am going to select paste. A copy of the folder is displayed on screen where the pointer is. As you can see, no two files can share the same name if they are in the same location as one would overwrite the other. Therefore, at the end of this file name, the computer has automatically extended the name by adding copy to differentiate between the two. We can then left click and hold to move this copy and if we hover over the original file and release the button, we have now put the copy of the folder inside the original folder. If we now double left click on the original folder, it brings up a window of what it contains, which is in this instance, the copied file. We can drag this copy back out onto the desktop if we left click and hold onto the file. And now that the window is still open, we can drag the file back in, rather than putting it back on top of the original file. Whilst not on top of any icons or files, if we press and hold the left button down and move in any direction, a window appears from the tip of the pointer. As we move in any one direction, this box gets bigger. We can then use this box to highlight multiple folders or files in one go, and then drag them in the same way, but together as one unit. Or we can right click to bring up the menu to manipulate these in one go. Alternatively, you can do the same if you right click and hold to select multiple items and immediately bring up the menu. So what have we learned? Left click to select, double left click to perform an operation, in our case it was to open a folder, left click and hold on an item to drag them, or left click and hold away from items to make a window to select a group of items or files. Right click for a menu, 
or right click and hold to select a group of items and instantly display the menu. Let's take this further, left click on the windows icon, this brings up our files, programs or app tiles if you prefer, or we can right click the windows icon and this brings up another menu for functions accessible by this area. So in either case we can select any of these by left clicking the mouse. As an example let's open a web browser. Start by a left click on the windows icon, this will bring up your windows tiles. Hover over the big blue E for the edge tile. Left click on this tile and hey presto we are ready to surf the internet. Alternatively you can left click on the smaller icon on the taskbar to open this same web browser. I will quickly show you how to use this window with the mouse. At the top right hand side from left to right we have the minimize icon, left click this and the window will disappear from sight. This allows you to access your desktop screen. The window is still open just not visible. If you hover over the E icon on the taskbar it will display a mini version of this window. Click on this to open it full page or the small E icon below it. In the middle we have the maximize icon. Left click on this and it makes the window smaller without closing it. Click on the same icon and it maximizes the window again. If you left click it again to put it in the reduced state I can show you how to manipulate the window with the mouse. We'll start with resizing so if we place the pointer at any of the edges the pointer changes shape into dual arrows. If we now click and hold we can now resize this window back and forth in these directions. If we hover over the corners the same physics applies. If we go back to the top of the window if we click in the window bar carefully avoiding any icons the top bar changes colour. If we now left click and hold we can now move this window around. If you wanted to you could have multiple windows open and have them side by side. The last icon a big X is the close icon. Pressing this closes the window altogether. Let's reopen the window again and press the maximize icon so we can have a look at the scroll bars. These scroll bars appear at the right hand side and at the bottom of the window if there's more information on the page that can be displayed in the currently sized window. At the end of these scroll bars there are arrows that represent the direction of movement for the window. If you left click on these the window will move in that direction. If you left click and hold the speed of movement will increase. You can also left click within the gap of these scroll bars and the same physics applies. Alternatively you can left click and hold the greyed out part of the scroll bar to drag the page over in the same linear direction for speed. Let's press the maximize icon again for a full screen. You will notice that the window only has scroll bars on the right hand side up and down. All browsers are set up to make them easy to navigate and to give you as much information as possible for you to look at. So if you scroll down this information can go on forever. On the mouse that I am using you will notice an extra part in between the left and right click buttons. This is a scroll wheel. Most basic mice have this extra feature these days. We can rotate this scroll wheel backwards and forth. This scrolls the window up and down as we do this. If we go to the side of the page and press down on this scroll wheel an icon appears on screen. We can now move the pointer above and below this circle icon. As we move further away the quicker the scrolling in this direction is. Just press the scroll wheel again to stop this function. Just be careful to be away from any on screen icons. This is supposed to be basic so we won't cover everything. However I will briefly go over the contents of this window while we have it open. If we move the pointer over items, say the photo boxes for example, they will change colour slightly to stand out from the rest of the page. We can select any of these items with a left click. Before you do this though, in this browser it indicates what page this said item will take you to. Within this little window on the left hand side it shows you who has produced this information and it will navigate you to their page. 
Just be careful what you click on. If you are wary of any page that you navigate to, just close the window by left clicking on the big X in the top right hand corner. In this large photo display area, we have left and right arrows within this picture. If we left click on these, the story moves onto the next or previous story. If we hover over the text, the text underlines itself and the photo changes slightly to signify they are combined together. So if you left click on either of these, they will take you to the same page. If we look at the structure of the window towards the top of the page, we can see alternative tabs, which also change colour when we hover over them. When items do this, they signify that these can be utilised. If this was just normal text, the colour would not change. Again, left click these to select them. In this instance, these are just different categories within the news stories. If we hover over an area where we are able to type something, the pointer signifies this by changing to another form of the cursor. If we left click within this area, the cursor is placed and we can now type things within this box with the keyboard. In this search bar, for example, type what you are looking for, then click the magnifying glass or just press enter as we have been using the keyboard to carry out this search. Also, with the help of Microsoft Word, I'll show you how to manipulate text within a document. Left click the X in the top right hand corner to close this browser window. Now left click the Windows icon, hopefully Word is installed on your computer. If it is, a Word tile will show on screen, so click this. If not, left click inside the Cortana search area and type Word. If Word is installed on your computer, it will now be displayed. So just click on it and now select New or Open a Blank or Basic Document. If you haven't got Word at all, click back into the Cortana search area and type Notepad. You will have this if you have Windows 10. In either of these cases, type some words or a sentence so that we can now manipulate this text. I'll open both of these windows on my system. If I hover over the windows, the pointer changes. I have to left click on the word window to make the pointer change. This is because I have two windows open. This change signifies that text can be typed in this window. If I place the text cursor at the end of a sentence and left click and hold, I can highlight parts or all of the sentence. If you remember the first video, this is the same as holding the shift key whilst pressing the cursor keys. So, whilst holding this left button down, the text will highlight. When I release the left button, the text remains highlighted. I can now right click on any part of this highlighted area and select what option I want from this menu. I'll select copy and then I'll put my cursor in the other window, right click again and select paste. Play around with this and practice getting more precise where you place the text cursor and highlighting parts within a sentence. In the notepad pane we have menus at the top of the page. We can highlight an area of text and select any of the options within these menus with the left click of the mouse. Within Word, as it's a word processor, we have a lot more options to manipulate highlighted areas with. Left click on the icons within this software. Just as a few examples, we can change text color, we can make the text larger, we can centralize the text within a page. There's lots of options. This has turned out to be another long video, but I want to give you as much information as I can in these early stages, as it can be daunting. At least now I think we have the basics down for the keyboard and now for the mouse. Remember, it's all about practice and repetition to help build your confidence. You can do it. I'd appreciate it if you would like this video if you enjoyed it. It only takes a moment for you, but it does make a big difference to me. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for further content, click the bell icon for notifications of new videos, and no, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to my channel. If you think someone else will benefit from these videos, please share this on social media or send them a direct link. If you have a friend or colleague who struggles with this type of thing, my target audience is those people, people who are just starting out in computers or just use computers for specific things so they haven't really explored all the other avenues. However, if you're watching this and you're intermediate with computers or an expert, I would also like your input. Whether you're a matured adult, young or anyone else in between, as long as you wish to learn and contribute, please comment, you're all welcome to do so. I still intend to do a further video with a modifier and fast keys, it just seemed this video was the next step after doing the basic keyboard video. A basic mouse video to help people navigate just made more sense. 
Therefore, I will get round to following up on the keyboard video, and I will make another video on the alternatives to having a mouse. Some people are asking me how do I find you on YouTube, how do I subscribe? I watch YouTube, but I just click on the videos people send me. I don't know what to do. Because of this, my next video will be on the basics of YouTube, for PC and for smartphones. Yes, I know it's supposed to be basic computers, but if I want to grow on YouTube I need to cover the smartphone element as these are computers as well. Also, it will help me reach my target audience. I still have my first video to release, so I will release this at the same time as this one. It's only a review video of a monitor, but with all these PC build videos, no one seemed to cover the monitor, keyboard and mouse part, so once we have covered the basics, I'd advise on budget versions for these. As I normally say, I wouldn't dare pretend to know everything. I was driven to do this as I was fed up with laptops overheating and dying on me. The last one was expensive and only lasted until the guarantee ran out. I thought, what can I do? I know computers from the 8-bit days and I was interested in games but not much of the hardware side of things. I started looking online and realised to get more for my money I would have to build something myself. So, after a bit of self-education, I built my own system. I have learned a lot over the past year and a bit, and honestly, I'm still learning as I go along. We all learn if we push ourselves to do so. We just need that push. I am also starting a Facebook page to help build a community of like-minded people. As this video goes out, check my homepage for details or click on, hopefully, the Facebook icon on the banner if I can work out how to do it. If you thought this video was helpful or you think I missed something important out, or you have any recommendations, please leave a comment. Share this video if you can. If you don't know how to do this, watch out for my next video, I will cover this. Most of all though, I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. I'm calm, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening. Farewell to next time, see you later.